I just want to bring up a couple of things and ask people to react if they like. We haven't talked too much about the JCPOA and Iran and the Trump effort to create dissent in Iran. Um, and I'm curious what you all think about the Trump policy. The European Union says it's trying to create the special investment vehicle. Nobody's sure it's going to work. Nobody's sure quite what it is. Um, my sense is the Iranians themselves do not want to break out of the JCPOA. Um, and the Europeans are trying to find them excuses so they can stay in. But I'm curious whether what you think the end result of this Trump policy against Iran is, is, is um, likely to be. Does, does anyone want to respond? No. Um, I don't think um, that um, Trump will achieve his goal. His goal, he said, is a regime change in Iran. He hasn't quite I said think, that, but that's what he means. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he wants um, to um, Iran to just accept his conditions. I don't think it will happen. Um, I think that um, the result could be the contrary. We could have a radicalization of the Iranian regime with uh, General uh, Soleimani being the leader, the new leader of uh, Iran. Uh, I think the Europeans are right, including uh, American allies, uh, the British, the French, the Germans, uh, the Russians and the Chinese also, to try to, to do this vehicle. I hope it will work. I think it's very important that we don't accept that America makes a deal, negotiates a deal um, with a lot of effort uh, and then uh, have it uh, sanctioned in the United uh, Nations mm -hmm. under a resolution, oh, yeah. That's right. uh, and then just throw it. And just walk it so away. Yeah. I think, of course, the answer, but I agree with you that most of the population of Iran wants to keep the agreement. They don't want to go nuclear, but if they are pushed, if they are humiliated, there's something that we have to consider in the Middle East, dignity of nations. Okay. Americans should take care that of that. And if they are pushed to the extreme, I think that okay. all the American foreign policy in Iran would be counterproductive. Great. Um, Mona and Miguel then. Okay. okay. Please. Well, I think that, first of all, an attack will fail to destroy all the facilities. This is one. But what will happen that it will radicalize more the Arab and Muslim worlds and generate more terrorism and anti-American activity. So military action against Iran will, is no good today because it's, it, it, it's, it will be a preventive strike. It won't accomplish much good and it will fail, as I said, uh, against organized militias and terrorists who are much better armed and they are accepted by the local population uh, and they're prepared to die for their cause. So well, no, this is what okay. we will get. No, because I mean, I, mean, I mean, part of what's interesting. Causing the Iranians to rally right. around the flag. Right. I mean, because part, part of what interests me is the way Trump simply has done what the Saudis and the Gulfies have always wanted, right? Anyway, Miguel, what do you think? Yes, very, very shortly, I think the Europeans have to stick demonstrate that the deal is going well. But we cannot exclude, we cannot ignore that Iran have an expansionist policy. So we cannot uh, close our eyes and not see that Iran is in Gaza, is in uh, Hezbollah. So the new agenda has to be built. So I think the deal now is how Europeans are going to say, OK, I stay with you on the nuclear deal. But we have to address other but missile, missile anti-ballistic missile, the role of Iran in the region, and how we engage with the Arab world. So that is the new, the new element, yeah. but maintaining our position. Yeah. No, I, it's interesting because the EU3 have had at least three conversations with Iran on security issues outside 
nuclear, but they haven't really gone a anywhere. But we have to. Um, but uh, did you? Before coming here, Wednesday afternoon, I went to a session. Talk louder. I went to a session on Iran, and uh, the official said the following: We want to apply maximum, maximum pressure. We want to be able to prevent Iran from exporting any oil. Any oil. Yeah. Hoping that this will force the Iranians to come to the table, and the administration then will have a treaty that deals with missiles, terrorism. Mm. And if this doesn't work, then we have the military option. But we have heard about the military option from Bush, we have heard that from Obama. And if you look at Trump, first he's unpredictable. He's, he said he was against the war in Iraq. He said he was against the war in Syria. My interpretation, I don't think he wants to start a war. And therefore, I don't know where this policy is going. But yeah. perhaps Itumar could yeah. elaborate more. Very briefly, I think that we do not know yet what uh, the negotiations with North Korea, the Trump's negotiations, will actually produce. But the tactic of first threatening and scaring the, the other side and bringing them to the table that worked with North Korea, at least to get them to the table, will not work with Iran. You are dealing here with a proud nation, with an imperial past, and you will have to find uh, a more accommodating way of uh, getting them to, to the table because I think ultimately it's in, in their interest to be there. Yeah, because I mean, I know one of the things that the European negotiators are worried about is that Israel, Bibi, who has thought about bombing Iran at least twice before and Obama tried to stop it, that Trump might not feel the same way and would get pulled into a military action that the United States yeah. doesn't even start. I, I think the, the, the threat of military action by Israel were actually meant to motivate uh, the United States to negotiate an, uh, the agreement, but obviously Mr. Netanyahu was not happy with the specific agreement, but the idea of, a, of an Israeli military raid against the Iranian nuclear is very problematic. The, if you, uh, the, the capacity, it's only one country that really has the capacity to do that. And that's us. Uh, that's it. No. Or the United States. No. Uh, but uh, uh, the threat of that action, I think, played an important, diploma, uh, the, an important effect on, on right. diplomacy. But uh, the beauty of a threat is that you use, you, you use it vocally and not practice it. Steve, um, yes. on something else. I mean, just 30 seconds. Uh, please, go ahead. You know, as I look at the Middle East and as I look at the violence and as I look at the wars, it seems to me that all the actors don't take into account what someone once said. When you act in defense of your security and the integrity of your country, make sure that when you act, the act is moral. But more importantly, the end result should be more. Right. And I think that should be kept right. in mind. Uh, one last question for you, if you just be brief, which I'll, I'll do it in a, in a not very sophisticated way. Does Mohammed bin Salman survive the next year, or will he be moved out as crown prince? What does anyone think? Yes, no. I or that don't want to touch it. Question? Sorry, it's a, question? it's a question. Will Mohammed bin Salman last another year as crown prince or not? I think he will do because um, he was appointed by the king as the president of the inquiry commission mm -hmm. on the secret services. Um, the king did not appoint a vice uh, prince, a vice um, Crown Prince, um, and I think that uh, Mohammed bin Salman uh, controls the surroundings mm -hmm. of um, of of the king. I think the king has hasn't got all his decisions. No, with him. That's right. 
and, um, and so and, 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 and we see that uh, now um, Mohammed bin Salman has got the support of Russia, which is quite important. Right. So, so I think so I don't think he will yes. yield. What no. about others? Sorry, I mean we're we're running out of time. No, I think that okay. he will not survive okay. another year. And uh, this latest this latest brutality has tarnished his reputation terribly, even though he is supported by the young people in Saudi Arabia, but he also has made a lot of enemies. The conservatives, the princes, the business, and now the international community is not very much for it. Okay. So there so were suggestions no. that the, his brother, his younger brother, mm -hmm. who is, um, I think, the ambassador in the United States, Khalid. could yeah. take over. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyone else quickly? And, yeah. and then we'll end. Okay. Yeah. I think the question is not will he survive his crown prince, but what happens next? And Prince Hassan in Jordan can tell you that you can be crown prince for many years yes. and then not become the king. Yes. Okay. Listen, just, just please join me in thanking this panel. We've been great. We're on time. And um, thank you all very, very much. Thank you.